Once the stuff of lunchboxes and casseroles, tuna really came into its own with steaks and sushi. It's good for us, but not so much for the tuna. Eve Turo-Paul is a food writer and author of A Taste of Generation Yum, and she joins us now on the line from New York, New York. Uh, Eve, start by telling us what's happening to tuna stocks worldwide right now. So in the last 50 years, 60% of the tuna has disappeared. It is drastically overfished. Um, bluefin tuna, which gets the highest price, actually 90% of the bluefin tuna is now gone. So there really is an epidemic in terms of overfishing, and it's now part of the larger conversation within the food community. So if we go to a supermarket and buy just your, you know, average dented tin of tuna, will it contain uh, some of these threatened species that you've just referred to? Um, very likely, yes. So there are two kinds of tuna that you should look for if you do want to have your tuna sandwich or tuna casserole, um, which is skipjack and albacore. Those are the least overfished. I do want to say it's not the best. <laughs> um, every kind of tuna at this point is overfished, but skipjack and albacore are the least. And what you mentioned before, you know, sushi, ahi tuna, bluefin, um, those are in much higher demand and therefore um, are at much higher risk of extinction. Hmm. So are you suggesting we not eat these? I personally have given up tuna. Um, there are a good number of chefs these days who are also giving up tuna. The bigger issue here is the fact that 90% of the fish that we eat comes from 10 different species. So salmon, shrimp, cod, those are also included in here. And this problem is going to continue as long as we continue to demand just those tens kind, 10 kinds of fish. So if we diversify what we're eating and look more towards what's growing locally, what kind of diversity is in our seas, what kind of new culinary adventures can we go on um, that are outside the world of salmon and tuna, then I th honestly think that the oceans are going to be able to um, repair themselves. Hmm. But just to be clear, because we're hearing all over the place now that we should eat less meat, for health and environmental yeah. reasons. Are you saying, you're not saying eat less fish though, presumably, right? Just different kinds of fish? Well, so here's the problem. <laughs> the problem is that the fishing industry right now is responding to demand, right? Like any marketplace. So currently the demand is for salmon, tuna, shrimp, cod, and that's what's being fished. There is a new, um, fad going on right now called trash fish, which is if you go to your local market and ask for their trash fish, which means the local underfished varieties, you'll be able to buy something that is far cheaper and is sustainably sourced. Hmm. But presumably the long range solution to this is to set quotas, stick to them and enforce yes. them. Yes. How, how likely yes. is it that we can actually do that? Well, the problem is that the vast majority of overfishing is happening in Asia. It's not happening on the shores of Canada or the United States. I mean, it, it is in some ways, but it's, it is regulated um, in North America. In Asia, it's not. And that's where, you know, 80% of bluefin is eaten. It's in Japan. Um, and the international community has yet to step up to the plate and really implement any kind of regulation or policing on overfishing. Uh, just a quick story, I just came back from the Philippines. I was in the islands um, scuba diving for my honeymoon and we visited a farm where they have decided that they are going to instead raise pigs so that they can stop relying on the oceans for their fish. Hmm. And I gather, uh, just sort of in following up to that, I gather there are some restaurants in North America right now which are actually boycotting tuna. You cannot get it there. Is that right? Yes, yes. So, you know, the revered chef Alice Waters, Dan Barber, they have all said that they're not going to be serving fish. Jonathan Sawyer is another chef from the Midwest who is being very vocal about the fact that he's taken tuna off of his menus. Hmm. Salmon farming, of course, big business. Do you think tuna farming could be something comparable? It is really difficult to farm fish. Hmm. And this is something that people are just now starting to figure out. Um, it has to do with the populations um, being too close together, so they're having problems with inbreeding, with salmon farming. There's also an issue of what to feed um, the different stocks. So I'm hoping that in the next few years, as more young people become more involved in farming, that aquaculture and fish farming um, will have you know, greater technologies developed to be able to do it in a sustainable manner. Hmm. Eve, let me tell you about something that's happening here in Canada, and let me get your take on that. We've got a yes. massive supermarket chain in Canada called Loblaw, and they are the largest, I gather, buyer and seller of fish and seafood. 
and they have a new what they call sustainable seafood initiative. The website says that they are, quote, committed to only selling sustainable, wild-caught, and responsibly farmed seafood products. What do you think of initiatives like this? I think it's super exciting. I think the problem with it at this point is that it's really hard to regulate. So a lot of times, wild caught is not actually wild caught. Um, farmed fish, some of it is farmed in a responsible way and some of it isn't. So I think it is so fabulous that this grocery chain is making that a goal of theirs, but it's really difficult to do um, on a mass scale and it'll be really interesting to see what happens with it. Well, they use words like natural and organic, and we see these words used, I mean, all the time now on all sorts of different yes. products. Um, in some respects, they almost seem like they have lost their meaning. I wonder if you're concerned that that same phenomenon is going to happen with words like sustainable. Well, the problem really is, is that there is no true definition. You know, what's the definition of sustainable? It can be different for different places and different people. Um, same thing for the word natural. It's not regulated. And the same thing for local. If something's labeled local, you may think that it's coming from a small farmer when in fact it's not. Um, so I think that there's going to be a growing um, educated consumer population. And hopefully that will drive governments either to make definitions and regulations for those words um, or perhaps it will lose its meaning. Hmm. And just finally, since you are eating less or even no tuna in your diet, what have you replaced it with? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, so I do, I get whole porgies uh, from my local, fi local fishmonger at uh, the market on Saturday, which is just a, a local fish. I guess it would be considered the trash fish, perhaps, of New York. And I roast them whole. It's super simple, super delicious. Terrific. Eve Turopal, it's great to have you on the line from New York City. Thanks for being with us on TVO tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.